Greetings ladies and gentlemen, it's been a while and uh, we're coming back to Adventures of Terasaki Tumbo in Kanshi. Last time we left him off in the bar and uh, in the previous episode we did a number of things including earning quite a bit of money, uh, figuring out uh, how to scavenge and also getting some lucrative uh, uh, loots from uh, unfortunate scavengers that uh, fell victim to uh, to ninja guards. Also, we participated in battle, leveled a little bit of our uh, stats, and with the money we went ahead and joined the Thieves Guild and were actually able to get this beautiful backpack as well as a little bit of uh, auxiliary ammunition. So today, um, I think what we'll do as a first thing, we'll uh, try to set up a mining post and uh, actually there is a nice trick to set up the, uh, well, nearly an automated mining post, which will allow us to uh, harvest, uh, well, ore, depending on what type of ore you want, but the best ore is, of course, uh, the copper, uh, essentially without any particular input. So there is a reasonable amount of the automation uh, that can be done with uh, Kenshi, and uh, I found that in many, play many, many cases it actually works uh, even better than in the X4. So, hmm, first thing that we will need, we'll need to actually get ourselves a house, a base, or kind of a starting point, if you will. And usually, in most of the towns, like these, some of the uh, houses that are ruined are going to be for sale. Um, without the Genesis uh, expansion, actually, most of the houses which are ruined are for sale, and they're usually one or two which are fully built that are for sale. So far with the Genesis I didn't really find any that are available for uh, purchase already pre-built. You usually have to get yourself something ruined and then fix it. So actually I know that um, in this particular seed uh, we do have uh, two houses for sale. I'm fairly sure these are the two for sale over here. And uh, this is actually a fairly tiny house, but uh, it's uh, it's a reasonable uh, sized apartment that will offer us opportunity to uh, uh, actually uh, set up a small, a small base. So we'll also explore uh, the ways to purchase the property and uh, to manage it, well, to a certain degree, and then we'll build upon it. So first thing we'll need to do is we need to select um, uh, a for sale property. A for sale property obviously is depicted uh, by the sign for sale, green, and C4, 4800 is how much money it will take to, uh, us to buy it. So all we need to do is just click it. Do you want to buy this building for 4800? Yes, please. And it's now ours. So you see that uh, this is the... Well, the building is called the, the, the Desert Pad, and the type is the Storm House Type 2. Actually, there are several types of the Storm Houses, and the only difference between them is the way they look. Uh, in terms of functionality, they're pretty much the same. Okay, so, as you can see, the house is still ruined, so we'll need to start and renovate it. And to do so, we'll need to select our character, or characters, and then you right click and then you'll have an option uh, or, or a menu like this will pop you stiff you'll have to uh, keep your uh, uh, right button uh, pressed and then we'll left click repair and as you can see it uh, redesigned it into uh, something that uh, seems to be uh, well, partially built and partially planned and now our character or characters will start fixing it or repairing it if you click on this building you'll see that um, there is uh, the condition for the door and basically the door is not broken but you'll see that there is a condition to the building it's condition six and uh, you'll see that they're lacking uh, that there is a lack of the building materials and that is simply because uh, well obviously the building is partially ruined so it requires some of the building materials to uh, reconstruct it and usually the building materials you'll you'll find in the bars uh, 
there are actually specialty shops that I hope we'll be able to explore during this episode, but uh, right now I don't really want to stray too far. But essentially in the cities, just like in Squen or the Veins Path, you'll uh, find a general shop uh, a vendor which will have a number of different wares uh, for sale. Right now we'll just navigate over uh, towards this bar and uh, welcome, let's trade. You'll see that there are four units of building materials available, so let's purchase that. And let's run back and also accelerate it so it's a little bit faster. So all I did is since uh, when you hover your uh, your mouse over the building, uh, it, it already changes to uh, kind of the building icon. All, all you need to do is uh, right click it and uh, your character will understand that it needs to be repaired. If it has uh, materials with it, it will deposit the materials and continue the repairs. So you can see that we did deposit four units of the building materials and the condition is slightly, uh, well, slightly, slowly improving. On the mid part screen to your uh, right, you'll see this uh, small section which has the name of the city, the hub, and this will be customizable if you start to build your very own outpost from scratch, but right now, uh, well, this, you own a tiny house in the, in the uh, city of the hub. Um, next, you'll have an option to have it uh, open for public or not, of course, I, well, I mean, obviously everything within the city is open to the public, however, your own property can be restricted only to you. Say private means nobody will just, you know, stroll in and decide that, oh, well, you know, if you have a bed there, I can, I can lie on your bed and rest or actually grab some of your food, because if you if you don't do that that will happen and the, uh, you probably wonder why i would ever want to um, um, uh, to set the building as non-private well you can also sell set up the automatic sales uh, from your uh, uh, from, from your house uh, owned in the city and uh, in that case you would want to allow the sales event to take place and well for the sales event to take place the actual customer needs to be able to okay uh, it seems that we might participate in, in some fights over here which is which is actually a nice way for us to train up a little bit uh, that is starving bandit so let's attack the starving bandit um, I'm not too uh, concerned to be uh, engaged in the fight, right, right over here, because there are lots of ninjas, so I'll have an option to uh, 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 to get a little bit of training, maybe increase my uh, toughness uh, by getting injured, <laughs> just like that. But damn, we got clubbed. So, yeah, uh, still, 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 no idea how to use a katana. That's 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 sad. Let's let's take this. Ah, we'll take Torper. We'll take this shot of gray. That costs nothing. Well, if if if, if anything, we'll be able to make a little bit of money. Um, none of these, I think, really matter. Well, it's going to sell for three hundred. Yeah, why not? Yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it. Uh, that is useless. Oh, there's actually a lot of loot here, so you know, might as well. Uh, mm, uh, swipe it. And even this. Oh, very nice. There's actually a fight going on over here, so... Maybe. Just, just, just maybe. We can get something else. And... Yeah, we'll take this. Yeah, we can't wear it. We know that we can't wear it. We probably didn't really level much during this encounter because it was so short. But that's okay. Seems that they're trying to shoot somebody. Hmm. Well, you know what? Let's sell this and then come back and sell some more. Loot some more. 
It's free money, free easy money. This is much faster than mining, so might as well take advantage of that. So the reason why I was leaving the city is because there is also another uh, bar, if you remember, where we uh, looted some of the scavengers and some of the uh, slave mongers. And uh, that place will usually also have sometimes the, um, the building materials for sale. So we're trying to get, oh, I don't know, maybe... Uh, six seven uh, units more of the of the building materials that should be good enough mm, let's see this one i think this is the oh, one more over here let's accelerate and i'll take katan i'll take this yeah give me everything i'll take everything I'll just steal everything uh might as well sell it don't think there's anything Anything else? Anyone? Actually, anyone else lying around? All right. I think this is good, and we'll we'll come over here again, sell our junk, and we'll be on our way to uh, to the to the second bar. Let's trade. Sell. Okay, so I'll just press M and I know that the rebel base is over there and let's accelerate, go a little bit faster, just leave the city, we'll probably we can look around, see what's going on around us. Do I have, oh yes, that's right, I have the mad face plate. Hmm. There is fight going on over here. So, these are all safe fights, so I'll try to uh, participate, if possible. We'll probably end before... Well, look at that. Oh, he's wearing a skirt? What is that? Let's, let's get in here. Okay, we got in here. Uh, attack unprovoked. Maybe we can... Maybe you can... Get a punch or two. And remember, this is... Why did we leave? Oh, that's not us. That's a ninja. Ran away. I wonder why. So, come on. Katana zero. So I guess when we get to one, we'll be actually able to swing. Ah, there we go. You saw? That's a swing with a katana. That's because we're actually probably at a full zero <laughs> scale. So we now know how to hold it. Oh, look at that. One Katanas. This one is really tough. No. Well, he's really tough because he's robot on top. The robots get uh, essentially nearly double the hit points for every single body part. And then they repair quite quickly, so... You know. Moaning plate skirt. What the hell? Um, yeah, definitely we'll take this, the ninja rags, that's over 200. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take all this. Um, I wonder, I wonder if, I wonder if this will look any decent on us. Let's see. Oh, yeah, we can't equip that. That's not compatible with our flat head. There is another... Well, actually, this is really good. Um, it's actually it's it's garbage, but the um, thing is that in this game you also have a number of environmental effects, and um, basically this mask is really good because it allows you to uh, survive in the places which are uh, polluted by noxious fumes and when you have the dust storms. Uh, the sun doesn't get in your eyes, and so you don't get massive debuffs to your... Okay, I guess that happens too. Um... Yeah, so the sun doesn't get into your eyes, so you don't get such massive debuffs, but this is a prototype grade, which is the absolute garbage, so I'm fairly sure we can get 
a better one. Maybe, uh, maybe from the ninjas. I actually, uh, on my different playthrough, have seen uh, even high-grade masks being sometimes sold at the at the uh, the, the thieves guild that we joined. So we'll we'll, we'll check it out uh, on our way back home. So since we're here, might as well just rob them and. That's probably a slave monger. And he's probably going to try and slave. Yep. Yep, that's that's it. We'll take this. Can't take any more. Alright. Again there is a fight, so let's let's engage. If we'll make it in time, probably won't. Uh, not much lost. Because we got the katanas to one. We're no longer going to poke our eyes with a katana. So that's a plus. Also, we do these short trips back and forth with uh, over uh, overfilled inventory, and that trains our strengths a little bit. But um, for some serious strength training, it's much better. Uh, to just fill your inventory with straight out iron ore, the heaviest ore you can find, that is the iron ore, and just run around for a day. And that will probably get your strengths to maybe 40 or 50. Now that's a very respectable amount of strengths, and probably strength is one of the most important stats in this game, primarily because it allows you to carry more, and carrying more is such in such RPG type games is, well, always the most, well, maybe not, if not the most important part, part then one of the most important parts. Still encumbrance 16, why so? Oh, because of this? Alright, let's trade, I don't, I don't really want this. Actually, these things are very powerful, um, uh, but with the skill level at probably 3 or 4, and this this gun actually requiring scale 70 to wield properly we can sh we can shoot the targets only at the distance of maybe a stretched hand it does a lot of damage but still it's risky and it's uncomfortable and uh, we want to use katanas anyway at least for now so we have three building materials we we'll purchase that and while at it i will also start purchasing books so We'll need some research artifacts, and that is needed to uh, basically learn how to build various things. Um, you do start a uh, game with uh, with the knowledge of building of some extremely basic things, such as, well, most basic research desk, and uh, I, I I think some tethered ropes and things like that which are fairly useless, but just about enough to get you uh, started. And uh, we'll need to uh, start, not start, but essentially expand upon that. We'll add this. And we still need at least two units, and let's see, we now have a roof. And yes, I know uh, this building seems to be just you know slowly materializing out of thin air, but uh, I think that's fine. Of course, it would be nicer if you could see how uh, individual pieces are being added, but that would be too much work. And then even X4, which is very uh, uh, heavily invested into base building, doesn't doesn't properly uh, uh, actually. Uh, depict individual pieces of uh, of modules being built. It's essentially just slowly uh, morphing from your raw materials into to something like a building. All right, um, there is still fight going on. I really want to get into a fight, but save fight. Uh, the most important part of that fight. Uh, and um, it doesn't seem that I'm able to. So for now, 
For now, let's just move to this outpost and mine some copper. And I'll show you the, the boring part of the game then, which is uh, earning steady but small income. And you can see that our, um, our skill level at laboring is probably slowly increasing. So if you look at laboring, yes, indeed it does. It actually is increasing fairly quickly. But because we're working in the dark, we have a large penalty. So next time I'll have uh, building materials available around me, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, build a torch right here so I can mine more efficiently during the night. It's a smart way. And um, yeah, we got excited and uh, we just went around and scavenged uh, some, uh, some, oh, actually, we scavenged a lot. Look at that, uh, 22 thousand again. So, well, I'll take it back. We didn't really lose uh, time because 22k was definitely worth it. Um, the thing that I want to do is once I get five units of copper, I'm going to grab that salad and I'll move to uh, uh, to Squen because they will have uh, a common. Uh, a common market, and that common market usually does have a number of uh, building uh, materials for sale as well as the research artifacts, and we'll need those in a moment. So, also, I'd like to get uh, a, a trader's backpack. And a trader's backpack is, is important because, well, uh, you can actually build a stack of the material there, so instead of having all the space occupied by so many different bandages, those things would just, you know, stack and actually occupy less space. Now they will weigh just as much, but as you remember in this game, you can always uh, you can always uh, lift your bag doesn't necessarily mean that you can move around with that bag. So, uh, the worst case scenario, you can probably lift a ton and then very slowly make your way uh, uh, towards your base uh, and start building. We'll be uh, coming to the bar in a few seconds and I think we should be making slightly less than 1k from from the sales. Yeah, actually much less than 1k from the sales. There we go. But still money. So, was this said? Let us go to the map and let us uh, target Squin. Uh, I'm not going to the Veins path because one, I am Hiver and I am a Hiveless Hiver, which means that uh, people uh, in the vein, and half of the vein are hivers, they will not going to speak to me. Uh, being hiveless is uh, frowned upon by the hive society, so we'll go to the shack city and see what we can get there. Now, oh, look at us run. We have our trusty katana next to us, we have this uh, leather jacket, flat head with the breather type uh, helmet and uh, straw sandals. We are the Samurai. Well, let's uh, speed it up a little bit. Get the animation, so it was a triple axis, actually. <laughs> Quite hilarious, but that's alright. As long as we get there. Well, also, we'll level our athletics. Uh, oh. Our, our, our running speed is decent, 16, 16 miles per hour, it's not too bad, but the thing is, most of the things in this game uh, have the speed of around 16 to 18, and uh, that's the bandits and the slave mongers and the different mercenaries as well as uh, um, the scavengers, they're probably around 20, so you want to make sure that in the beginning of the game Especially if you see that uh, somebody is coming at you, you're at least able to run away. So 
try to uh, be able to run at the speed of 20, about 20-ish kilometers per hour. So that right there in the far is Squin. Squin, right? Squin. So we'll make our uh, way there in a, in a few moments. And since it's a shack city and this is the first time we're visiting them, they're going to harass us. Well, actually, they are also are going to try to examine our bags, and from time to time they will be requesting to examine your bag uh, upon the entrance of the city to check for the contraband. I mean, if you're carrying drugs or strong drinks, then, you know, you might be put to jail for that. I actually think they will straight, straight out put you to jail. Uh, if you if you if you stay on spot you should probably run away usually and then try to return back even though you have the bounty up to a certain point the bounty can be paid off what's your fragile bones bug man I'll die proud death then I'll live a life of shame well that's true our actually limbs are fairly fragile and they didn't care you probably see us like yeah that stickman has no way of carrying around a reasonable amount of contraband or any contra he couldn't afford he, he, he wouldn't survive in the place where the contraband is sold he wouldn't survive the, the marshes so here's the thing um, think yourself a warrior bugman and this would be happening in the shack cities all the time our clown was a sword actually we are clown was a sword um, Oh yeah, he's going now to follow us and... Oh, yeah, he changed his mind. So, actually you can come to the bar and check out uh, people, as well as the... Uh, some of them are going to be up for recruitment. Uh, you can click on them and see um, their stats. Obviously don't want to hire anyone, which is quick link. Right here, you see the thief fans. Um, Remember, these guys will buy stuff from you for cheap. Well, not for cheap, for, for, for half the actual price, but no questions asked. So, you know, if you're able to rob people blind, you can then immediately come here and make some quick buck. Well, some, some quick cat. Alright, so this place, obviously, that looks like an armored guy, is the place where uh, you buy armor. And um, these places specialize in the plate and the heavy armor and semi-heavy armors. And uh, the thing is, for us, it probably really doesn't matter if we equip the armor. It's right now better to go with the stat boost in order to uh, be able to survive. But generally, you'll see right here, you know, mercenary full plate. It seems like it has. A number of really good stats, resistance to blonde and blah 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 blah. But the thing is, look at the debuffs. The stealth and crossbows, we don't care. Dodge, we don't care because that's unarmed combat. A combat speed. Dot um, uh, 86 multiplier, so that's 14% debuff. Dexterity, 70%, so 30% debuff. Um, melee attack bonus, melee defense, martial arts. These kind of armors are only good for the characters which are fairly well trained and can take the hit in the uh, in the in these categories of skills. Uh, if we would equip this armor, we wouldn't be able to hit jack shit. So uh, even though we can afford it and it's still really expensive, we shouldn't really take it. As I remember, um, brute plank. Heavy armor class. What is that? I think that's yeah. That, I think that's a shield. So uh, this is actually a fairly decent thing. It gives you a, per a perception debuff, a martial arts debuff, and a melee attack uh, debuff. Uh, but it gives you a huge boost, an absolutely monstrous boost to uh, defense. So this is actually not a bad thing, but. Um, as a standalone character, probably it's not worth it. I wonder if there is actually anything reasonable for sale. And it's, this is not bad. A crossbow and a melee attack, melee defense bonus. You know what? We'll, we'll forego these for a while. These are kind of hard decisions to make with a little bit of money that we have. We 
want to invest it elsewhere. This place, which has a shape of a, of a, of a sword, is where you buy essentially all your melee weapons. There's another bar, you can go in, check out what's going on there. And uh, I don't think there is much, uh, much to check out. So what we are going to do, oops, however, is we're going to head ourselves over towards this place where the balance is displayed. And this place, what we can do is we can purchase ourselves some, some building materials. So I'm going to come here, trade, and you can see that there are a bunch of different trading materials available, some random wheat, straw, copper, robotics parts, but we want all of this and we want the research books. So with this at our hands and a fair over encumbrance, we'll try to survive while making our uh, way back to the hub. And again, uh, not much to watch here, we'll accelerate. And <laughs> you can see that our pace is now noticeably slower. Kind of a graduate of the funny walk academy. Yeah, that's alright. Uh, as long as we don't meet any bone dogs, we should be fine. Look at me encountering a bone dog right here. Hopefully not. Yeah, right there we see our destination, so we'll just hop our way. Ah, uh, loading. And Anytime you get this uh, loading uh, notice, I suggest you just pause the game by uh, play, uh, pushing the space bar till this loading icon is gone. Because otherwise you'll get you'll get these loading bars and then the stuttering, and that's very annoying. Let's see now. What are those? I hope those are just goats. Those are male goats. The uh, thing is that these male goats have actually better stats than we do, so should we try to fight uh, a grown-up goat, we will die. Well, maybe we will not, but there's a good chance that we'll die. So let's not fight goats alone. At least not yet. We can slow down now and make ourselves well, make our way back to the back to the house. Come on. And now we'll start the building process. And I think this should be enough to complete the house. And we'll get the notice that the house is complete. Mm -hmm. And probably that's the time when you want to turn that annoying background music. Alright, so since it's now complete we can actually enter it. We have some garbage lying around from the time when we purchased this and you can press Alt and then click on this and just collect it and then just sell it off or just toss it away outside. Next thing that we need to do is we need to build ourselves a research desk and you do this by clicking this button and you'll have a number of different options here of buildings and blah 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 camps you want to go to tech uh, planning table is something new uh, in the in the genesis so I'm not familiar with that no reason to you know spend any effort there so I'll just start with the with the basic research desk and the thing is well this is the only thing available to us anyway and it requires three building materials how lucky we have exactly three, so this should be built fairly quickly. Let's accelerate. And there we go. Well, almost there we go. Completed. Um, if you go to your inventory and also left click, um, 
on the bench. You'll open the inventory of the bench, so you have both inventories open. Clicking Shift and left button, well, sorry, right button, will transfer the whole stack of the research materials to the research desk. Then you can say Show Research, and you'll have a number of things to choose from now. Uh, houses and things like that, it's probably not important, but the item storage is a good thing to have. Uh, you can go to crafting, uh, fabric manufacture, and all the different things. So um, I think what we want to have is the storage box, yes, a storage box or, and uh, well, farming, these are actually free, we're not spending anything. Uh, maybe one here. Improved stone mining. I would definitely suggest never to try to make any money from mining stone. That is a uh, non-appreciated job and the, the, probably the worst paid mining job that you can find. It's just not worth it. Um, let's let's try. Well, maybe we can we can do something with the core. Uh, small more horses and you know, buildings. Well, small house is one of the key research. Uh, things that you have to do for which you will have to pay with the research artifacts it shows you how to build simple houses and this is important because um, actually to go to the tech 2 you need to know how to build small houses now well, imagine this that you need to have some degree of the uh, knowledge on the engineering to advance in your research that's that's reasonable and so we'll right now set towards uh, set, set our goal to research and if you press shift and then right click then you'll see this automatic function of the task appearing and what this means is that if I try to move my character once the immediate uh, action is complete he'll go back to do his originally assigned job that's an automation in this game it's very simple uh, to actually create complex tasks you can uh, operate a single, a whole actually assembly line by uh, properly choosing the sequence of which machines to operate. So uh, the product of one machine will fit into another, and that will fit into the third one. So and going through the sequence, uh, your uh, character, single character, could start mining, you know, a simple iron ore and go all the way down to production of the swords. Now, with a single character, it's going to be a very slow process. So, um, I would say an, an inefficient an inefficient outpost operates probably with about 30 characters uh, working full time. Uh, some of them actually uh, engaged in production of food, drugs, books. Another, another fun stuff. So right now um, we're in the process of the researching and if you go to the desk and you click the research you'll see the progress over here. Also in the hub city uh, menu you'll see a research panel and that's uh, actually your own research being selected and uh, being uh, researched. The power is the total amount of the energy available uh, produced in the uh, in the town and it's actually produced by those windmills uh, which is very convenient because all you need is wind and uh, in arid areas like this um, nothing grows but you get a lot of wind which means you get easy and cheap electricity in other places you will probably need to uh, first set up the crops harvesting and then produce the biofuel out of that and then basically put into a heavy generator so you can have enough energy. In the cities there is a big bonus that you don't have to think about the infrastructure of supplying you with power. Usually there is abandoned power available. Well depending on the city but in most cities you do get a reasonable amount of power available. Um, 490 means this is how much the energy generation is available and 146 is the expenditure and if you click on your uh, on your equipment. Now this one doesn't really consume any energy, but a higher level research desk will, as well as the lights uh, in your house will consume energy. And essentially many different things uh, will require uh, energy as well as supporting the machinery and such. So you need to have 
uh, it available, uh, usually at, at least 2x amount than, uh, than the consumption if you're using wind power, because sometimes you can get slower winds, and the slower winds would be less power. And what do you do if you have less power? Well, you can also build batteries, and this is a really neat thing. You can build and upgrade batteries, and this will allow you to store excess power. So when you hit those hard times when there is no wind, you can use the battery power to power all your all your base. It's, it's very neat, um, very in-depth. So I think at this point um, I'll continue to research and cut this video and uh, meet you in the episode 3 of this series. Uh, thank you very much for uh, viewing and if you'd like to uh, uh, hear anything in particular about Kanshi or participate in or, or uh, actually want us to participate in some adventure, let me know in the comments. Have a great day!